Hi everybody, how's it going? My name is Paolo Moretti, I'm a technical support engineer here at Informatica and this is the second video of a two video series about troubleshooting connectivity, client-server connectivity issues between the Power Center clients and the Informatica server. Um, on the first video we troubleshoot, we, we worked on the first error and now we are going to focus on the second error. So let's go straight to um, troubleshooting exercise number two. This is how we left um, video number one. So we were able to fix the first error and the second error showed up. Uh, before going ahead with troubleshooting this error, I want to show you something I forgot to mention in the first video. So um, let's close this um, let's let's leave this open, but I want to show something uh, using Process uh, Explorer. Uh, we didn't use Process Explorer on the first video. Um, I meant to show you uh, about this, but I forgot. So if we um, select the designer here and we go to Properties and then the Environment section, and then we look for the Info domain files environment variable we can see that it's pointing to that file domains.info which means that um, this variable if set up is the variable that controls where the file where the application um, is looking for that file so um, my solution on the first video was to get the domains.info from from the server and I put that file exactly on the client home directory and because this was the configuration of the info domains file um, although another approach might be uh, maybe you know exactly where that file is and so you might change the info domains file and decide to point to a different location so that might be another approach. Now let's go with the second um, exercise, the second issue. Uh, although before uh, looking at the issue I'd like to uh, look at what we can find out using Wireshark when the connectivity is established without any problem because that will help us understand where things might go wrong. So I close Explore and monitor. I will close this client because this client is the one giving me issues. So I'll open another one which works fine. And then I'll select Wireshark. So I've already selected the, the actual uh, network interface I'm going to use. Uh, in this case, I'll show you that I'm working um, remotely, so so I've got two Ethernet interfaces. The first one is the physical one and the second one is the one created by the VPN tool. So I need to be aware of this because if I start sniffing packets here I won't be able to see anything. So in this case I made already sure that I'm um, sniffing packets on Ethernet uh, 3. And this is the server I'm going to connect to. Uh, so let's try to establish this connection here. Let's start connecting data. And let's see what we can find out. So everything is working fine. There are no errors here, although look at how many, um, how, you know, how much information is exchanged between uh, client and server. At this point, it looks like. Uh, the connectivity okay this is fine so it has already been established so let's focus on 
Wireshark then and um, so this is my uh, source port as I mentioned before uh, the source port is chosen by um, a bunch of dynamic ports provided by the uh, operating system if you want to take a look at the um, range of ports available you just need to to use this command from a comment prompt on Windows and you'll get you know the start port number and then the number of ports available and these are called the dynamic or ephemeral ports if you remember from video uh, number one we were uh, speaking about the different sessions that are established between the client and the server uh, since this is a good established connection we can actually um, look at how many sessions are established and I've got another filter here already available so apart from filtering by the um, destination host name I'm also using um, HTTP so in this case uh, since I'm aware that I'm using HTTP to exchange information between server and client I can use that and I'll say HTTP contains core services uh, because this is the message available here that and it will allow me just to see how many sessions are established uh, this info field here the column is not an actual column um, available within the packet it's just a summary provided by Wireshark depending on the packet type and the protocol this might change so in this case with the HTTP contains core services I'm actually looking into the HTTP uh, packets and again you can see that this 23940 is my uh, node port and look at how many sessions are established so since the first one we can see the session established with the user management service another one with the licensing service and so so uh, with this what I mean is that we need to use we need to collect everything and we need to reduce the amount of traffic on the client by shutting down application that we don't need uh, because we need to collect every single packet and then we will we need to use the display filters to filter the information out so this is just the communication with the domain and then eventually if we go back to the full data exchange we'll see that um, the connectivity is established between the client and this port which is the port the repository service is listening to so I'm back here to the client the designer that doesn't work and Wireshark on the left side uh, the filtering is already enabled is the same display filter that I used for the working connectivity let's see what happens here so it's failing and I'm not getting anything in here which is uh, weird so um, let's try to um, connect using uh, telnet so I know that this is the port I'm trying to reach this is the node port so telnet my host name and the port and yeah I'm able to establish the connectivity using telnet so that means that the port is open um, and the communication can be established without any any problem so why why it's not um, why it's not working um, the information has already been collected in here so what else can we do we can just try to use a different filter so let's go back to that um, the filter we had before with HTTP contains but in this case let just focus on HTTP okay we get something and let's try to use HTTP contains core services so we are not using the destination host let's just use HTTP contains core services and this is something that might be useful because 
we can see get and post um, method HTTP method used with our node so actual SUG LX73 the port is the correct one although for some reason we are going to a different port 8000 and a different server which is um, strange um, so um, uh, without um, of course in a different scenario this might involve you know getting in touch with the AT system and see what's happening in there uh, but there is something else we can do also from uh, the client side um, since we are using the HTTP pro protocol uh, there might be a chance that you know that also explains why Telnet went through and our communication didn't go through uh, is that there there might be some uh, proxy uh, between our client and the Informatica server and um, the, the, the client is configured to connect to that proxy first so if we go back to our uh, friend here uh, process explorer and click on designer properties and we look again at the environment variables we can see that we have this variable in here the HTTP proxy variable which, which is actually pointing to that server and that port so this is what uh, is causing the issue the next step is try to remove this variable and try the connectivity again and see if it works so I've removed the variable restarted the application and let's look at the environment of this process now there is no um, HTTP proxy variable setup so let's pick up the um, older filter the previous filter let's restart this capture again and let's try to establish the connectivity and now as you can see everything is working fine so we have um, concluded this exercise as well um, just um, some um, notes about the root causes so in this case it was a proxy and it was just easy to fix because of the HTTP proxy variable but there might be other cases where maybe you might have antivirus or um, other specific configuration which you cannot change you need to get in touch with your IT department uh, you need to be aware that the power center clients cannot bypass a proxy so you might try to uh, create a batch file and set your own variables uh, we can try to look for a workaround but it all depends on the on uh, what's causing the the communication with the firewall um, the tools we've uh, we've used as you can see of course ping and telnet are okay they, they, they work at the um, telnet works just at the uh, TCP layer so it won't allow you to see anything wrong happening at the application layer like in this case um, we've chosen to work with display filters I know sometimes there are issues with you know how many data we want to collect but due to the um, random ports used the multiple sessions established we need to collect everything and then filter that information out I've also chosen to use some um, filter like um, um, so you, um, um, if you go back to the video you will see that you will most you will mostly see host name you won't see any IP address and that was done in, on purpose because um, just because uh, to, you know I don't want to, I didn't want to share IP addresses on this video but if you are doing that um, if you are on a real actual troubleshooting um, scenario uh, of course you can just work with the IP addresses it might be easier and it's going to be um, quicker um, I've also added those columns so the source and destination ports they are not there available by default I have also set up on Wireshark the name resolution automatically so 
all the IP addresses were automatically translated into host name. Um, in some cases, uh, if you cannot use Wireshark, you can also use Process Monitor because um, I've been using Process Monitor with um, just the file system activity, but you have several options. You also have the options to see network activities. So that might be helpful as well. Um, here you have a list of um, references you might want to look into. And if you want to try it uh, at home, so the only thing you have to do is just uh, create just an HTTP server. You can use Python, it's that simple. And then you just define a batch file with um, the um, connectivity uh, with the uh, variables that you need. So it's, it will be something like this. So you set up the HTTP proxy variable pointing to this, to the server where you started the simple HTTP server and then you start the application from here. So that's the way you can use to uh, reproduce this issue. Again, if you have any th feedback about this video, just let us know and thank you again.